question I get asked a lot is when should I go and see a physician? So this is my general advice. If you've developed a fever and a cough but you're not entirely sick and it feels like it's a cold, maybe a little bit of the flu, then I would advise you to stay home and treat it like a regular cold or regular flu. So things like Tylenol, Motrin, fluids, rest. If you feel like there's something more than that, then that's when you should be reaching out to your physician or your other care provider. If you feel like you're at risk for a coronavirus, so if you've met the guidelines where you have the symptoms, fever, cough, and you're at some sort of risk by traveling to other countries that had coronavirus, or that you were around somebody that had coronavirus, then that would also be a good time to contact your care provider. If you do need to seek medical care, such as at an urgent care center or at the emergency department, and you do feel like you've met the criteria for coronavirus, it's really important to let them know ahead of time. And the reason for that is we want to protect our employees as well as other people in our facilities if you have a potential for coronavirus. So it's very important to call first to let them know who you are, what your symptoms are, so that they can meet you and appropriately bring you in for any sort of testing that may have to be done. There's a lot of information out there about COVID-19 testing. What was previously solely run through the CDC has now been opened up for other people to order tests, including some private physicians. It has been also opened up by some of our private lab providers, including Quest and LabCorp. What is challenging, though, is the capacity to run all of these tests, and they still haven't built up a good pipeline so we can get testing done quickly. So it's a little bit different than what we would do for influenza, where people can come in, get a rapid flu test done, get their answer and be on their way. These tests still take time. In one of our private labs, it usually takes anywhere from two to three days to get the answer. And in some of the state labs, it usually takes about a day to get the answer. So what we're asking, or what we're planning for, is to prioritize who we're gonna be testing. So it's people that really meet some of that risk criteria. So people that have symptoms for coronavirus, fevers, coughs, things like that, and people that have some risk as well. So traveling to countries that have active coronavirus or being around a person that has been diagnosed with coronavirus. Now there are uh, situations out in the community where you don't fit all of those very discrete definitions. And that has to be a conversation with your care provider on whether we should do testing or not. But just realize that uh, we can't do testing on everybody that comes in with cold-like symptoms just because there's just not enough tests that are out there. One of the things that, we're, that we would like to do is uh, set up different sites where we can collect samples as well from people that potentially could have coronavirus. And this is generally reserved for people that we don't believe need hospitalization or other sorts of acute care services. So if there's people in the community that have some of the symptoms, such as fever and a cough, and do meet some of the, the risk factors, such as travel or being around other people that may have had coronavirus, then we're trying to develop a platform where the person doesn't even have to come into one of our facilities. They can use a simple app that will walk them through the screening questions and then allow them to have a conversation with one of our care providers. And if it's determined that, yes, we think we do need to get a sample to test for coronavirus, then we would direct them to an alternative site so they wouldn't have to come to one of our facilities where a sample would be collected. And we would send that to the lab and then we would, then we would call the, the patient back in a couple of days and let them know what the result of that test was. As you may have noticed, there's been a lot of cancellation events that have gone on out in the community. Things such as basketball games, hockey games, parades, all sorts of things like this. This is what's called social distancing. So the reason for doing those things is to prevent transmission of disease. What you need to understand though is each person's risk for disease or severe disease is really dependent upon a couple of factors. So people that are more elder in age, so greater than 60, and people that have some disease processes such as heart disease or diabetes or something that suppresses the immune system have to be really careful about their activities, such as they, shouldn't probably, they should probably avoid uh, large audiences, they should probably avoid you know, going out when there's a lot of congestion, 
probably shouldn't fly on airplanes, go on cruise ships, anything where they're going to be in a very confined space with a lot of people around. Now with that being said, it's perfectly safe to go to the grocery store, to the pharmacy, to do all of the normal things that you would do throughout the day. But what we suggest is look at your own individual risk and make sure you're planning accordingly. One of the other things that's frequently asked is, how infectious is this agent? So when we look at the data, again, coming out of China, we try and discover how many people does somebody that's infected end up infecting. And that number now is around two and a half, which means if I'm a person who has COVID-19, how many people am I going to end up infecting? So it's usually about two and a half people for every person that's infected. The reason why we think about it that way is, to be, is we have to decrease that transmission. So if we can get that number underneath one, where I'm not transmitting it to anybody, that's when you break the epidemic. If it increases, where I'm spreading it now to three or four people, that's how it increases the spread. The normal spread or the normal transmissibility for things like influenza is right around there as well, around two and a half. So a lot of questions about how long do I need to stay quarantined if I am diagnosed with COVID-19 or if I'm at risk for getting COVID-19. So obviously if you have the infection you need to follow the advice of your physician. So most cases it's going to be a mild case, you'll have something like a common cold or maybe a flu-like. And so keep in touch with your physician to understand when is it appropriate to come out of quarantine and go back to work, do all those normal activities of life. For people that are at risk for then COVID-19, so these are people that have come back from a country where there's been a high penetration of coronavirus, typically those people are put on a 14-day quarantine. And really the reason for doing that is it takes anywhere from one to 14 days for that virus to incubate and for you to become symptomatic or produce any sort of coughing or high fever, things like that. After that period of 14 days, we're very confident that you would not be carrying the virus.